Hey guys, David here. Welcome to Digital Outlook, where you're going to find the best community in all of crypto. In today's video, we're going to take on a hot topic, private and public ledgers. So guys, without further ado, why don't we get to it? Now, I'm sure that most of you are already aware that there is major chatter going on throughout the interwebs with respect to there being a different price for private ledger XRP and public ledger XRP. And in fact, I'm personally seeing a lot of questions coming into the channel on this very subject. And considering the fact that there are so many new people getting into this space, we have got to get clarity on this issue. Now, having said that, this whole controversy started from a video clip of an individual who came out and said, look, I have seen the private ledger and the price of XRP on that ledger is $327,000 versus the public ledger, which is at roughly about 40 cents. So guys, let's take a look at this little minor clip here and then we'll come back and address this major controversy. Uh, yeah, no. So I don't think they're using another XRP. I know they have a private ledger and a public ledger. I've seen the private ledger once. I've seen the price go as high as $327,000. And you could see this on one of my shorts uh, when it hit about $10,000, $9,000, I think. I've commented to about 20, 30 people at least. I, I saw it go to uh, $327,000 on a YouTube video once. That was live in Japan and it, from five minutes, five minute YouTube video. And I've seen that the private ledger does exist. The public ledger also exists. Now, how do they keep them separate? Through nodes on the XRP ledger, right? The thing is what the merge of the private and the public, I think that will happen when this utility starts to come on, right? Also, um, I don't want to lose my train of thought. The XRP ledger, the private ledger, right? And the public ledger, at some point, they are going to have to, how, how would I say? There will be a merge at some point guaranteed, but we have to have that regulation first and that clarity before they go ahead and utilize them. So let's peel back this onion. So after having watched this clip, it is very clear to me that this individual truly does not understand what he's really talking about. And a lot of what he's saying can be easily debunked. And now let's address the first bit. So he's talking about private ledgers in a way that seems like there's some sort of mysterious thing. I've seen the private ledger as if none of us knew that there were such things as private ledgers well let's address that one number one so let's take a look over here guys here we have the private ledger now this was dated january 2nd 2022 but its article is addressing something that was announced by ripple back in march of 2021 where ripple announced it built a private version of the open source public xrp ledger to provide central banks with a secure controlled and flexible solution for the issuance and management of central bank digital currencies. Guys, we know that Ripple has been selling this infrastructure around the globe to various nation states in order for them to, them to develop their central bank digital currencies on private ledgers. And in fact, when you go to Ripple's site themselves, when they're talking about a secure blockchain for a sustainable economy, and they're addressing central bank digital currencies, currencies just read this right here ripple offers a complete platform for the minting managing transacting and destroying of central bank digital currencies each solution is built 
on a private ledger that is based upon the XRP Ledger technology, a proven blockchain that has transacted over 70 million times over the course of 10 years and is trusted by financial institutions around the world. So when this guy here is talking about, oh, this private ledger, that is no secret. There has always been this idea of a private ledger that Ripple has been developing so central bank digital currencies could be issued upon it. Now, what are central bank digital currencies? Well, central bank digital currencies are not like XRP in any way. Central bank digital currencies are exactly what they sound like. It is digital currency, just like fiat currency, but issued by central banks. So the United States, that'd be the Federal Reserve. Then you'd have the Bank of Canada for Canada, you know, the Bank of England, Bank of Australia, on and on and on. They're central bank digital currencies. And of course, they need to be on private ledgers so that the information that's there and the issuance of that currency can be secured and centralized. Now, what I want to talk about next is this price thing where he says, well, I've seen the price of $327,000 on a private ledger. And you know what, guys? I'm thinking that might be true. He may have seen it. Why is that? Because these central bank digital currency private ledgers have been going through multiple testing phases at, at various points at, in different countries all around the globe. And so we've even seen glitches when we look at the markets and you see XRP at, you know, like $15,000 and various glitches and we're able to easily identify them. But the way that this guy's putting it out there is somehow that this is, you know, they have one price for these big boys over here and a different one for us. Well, number one, that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. And in order to debunk the price thing, let's look over here and take a look at what David Schwartz himself, who, by the way, was one of the core designers of the XRP ledger, has to say about it. Now, Ripple CTO pokes holes at theory suggesting XRP price at $327,000 on the private ledger. David Schwartz, in a tweet yesterday, questioned the logic behind conspiracy theories suggesting XRP is priced considerably higher on the private ledger. And the response came as this crypto influencer, Crypto Geek News, shared this clip, the one that we just watched, that Ripple had priced XRP as high as $327,000 on a private ledger. Now, David comes out and basically what he says, and in fact, I'm going to play a little clip of it that he spoke about on Thinking Crypto, give credit out to that guy for the clip. But basically what David says is it makes no sense. Why would any central bank or any bank for that matter pay $327,000 for one XRP when it's the same XRP in a Apparently, that's what this uh, guy is reporting in his little clip. It's the same XRP. When you can turn around and buy it for 40 cents on the open market. Guys, it makes no rational sense. Let me play this clip from David Swartz so that you can hear it in his own words. And we'll be right back. But uh, the question is, will the value of XRP be the same on the in the private ledgers as it is on the public? Yes. The value proposition of XRP is that it has this these liquidity pools. It, it, it doesn't make sense to isolate something. Like there's no place where gold is worth twice as much as it is now because if there was, people would just bring gold there and they would write and they would push the, they would buy gold somewhere else and they would sell it there. Um, unless the only way that you can have the value be very different in two places is if there's a lot of friction. And if there's friction, someone will make a business of removing that friction. So I don't see any realistic scenario where XRP has significantly different value unless something's wrong. So like a good example of a case, there was a time where the value of XRP, they called it the kimchi premium, right? Where the value of XRP in some Asian countries was very high, but that was because there were capital controls, right? That was because things were bad. Um, I think that's a sign that something is not going well. The value proposition of XRP is that you can take it to all of the places, right? If I sell you some gold and you say, hey, this gold can only be used in jewelry, you're like, well, that kind of sucks. I don't want that gold, right? The value proposition of gold is that you have access to the entire value proposition position of gold. And so I don't, I don't see any scenario in which pieces where it makes sense to snip pieces off again, unless something is wrong. 
So there you have David Schwartz, one of the core designers of the XRP Ledger, coming out and telling you flat out that there would be no reasonable rationale for there to be a different price. Now, I want you to think about something. If you were the guy that paid $327,000 for one XRP, how upset would you be that it's being sold to someone else over here for 40 cents? I think you would lose your ever-loving mind, and so would I. Guys, these bankers are not in the position of doling out hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars for the same asset that they could pick up for 40 cents. But I want to address something else. So in this guy's clip, he at the end of it starts talking about something that clearly shows that he really does not understand what private and public ledgers are. Because he talks about at some point in the future, they're going to amalgamate this. And look, I don't want to lose my train of thought here, but they're going to try and mesh it in somehow. And he has no real way of explaining what he's trying to say because, guys, it is absolutely baloney. There is never going to be a meshing between the private ledgers and the public ledgers now. Let me show you why that's true. I'm going to play a clip here right from Ripple that explains central bank digital currency and private ledgers and how they interact with the public ledger and XRP. And you're going to see it clearly for yourself so that you don't get tied up and mixed up with this kind of thinking. We'll be right back. Today's global financial system is more complex than ever before. Yet as the world's economies grow, the infrastructure they rely on needs to evolve. Every nation has its own independent monetary policy and regulatory standards. But with varying system access and legacy technology, the world's financial infrastructure can seem overwhelming. At Ripple, we enable governments and central banks around the world to create new, high-performance financial infrastructures built on blockchain technology. More specifically, we help governments build and launch central bank digital currencies or CBDCs. They are national currencies powered by modern technology that is secure, centralized and scalable. And these CBDCs will enable central banks to implement their monetary policies in more efficient and effective ways. The Ripple team brings a wealth of expertise to every new CBDC solution, working with hundreds of financial institutions, policymakers and regulators. Our solutions facilitate billions of dollars in cross-border payments around the globe. Ripple's CBDC solution is based upon one of the most reliable, sustainable and open source blockchain protocols, the XRP Ledger XRPL. The XRP Ledger technology is perfect for CBDC blockchain applications. It's fast with transactions complete in 2 to 3 seconds. It's easily customizable and programmable. It's reliable having closed over 72 million ledgers since 2012. The ledger's native functionality for issuing digital currencies also reduces the need for bespoke programming and reduces risk. Finally, the technology is sustainable as one of the first carbon-neutral blockchains. Each pilot is completely customizable and shaped to the needs of the central bank by an expert team. Here's how it works. Each nation's CBDC is hosted on a private version of the XRP ledger. Access by participants is granted by the administrator and fully secure. Using Ripple's CBDC solution, the central bank has full control over supply, allowing them to increase supply or redeem it. And through a standard API and multiple SDKs, integration into existing systems is simplified and suitable for traditional and non-traditional participants. Additionally, the central bank can issue other assets and allow participants like commercial banks to do so. The central bank can also authorize who holds the currency on the ledger, whether that's held directly by consumers or through commercial banks. Transactions typically settle in seconds compared to days, making CBDCs suitable for use cases like retail points of sale. This can open the door for real-time salary payments and collection of tax at point of sale, which gets funds to an institution or a consumer faster while eliminating debt risks. 
CBDC data is fully controlled and auditable by a central bank, allowing for its analysis in support of monetary policy. And the data maintains transaction privacy, while still allowing for regulators to monitor for criminal activities. Finally, a Ripple-designed CBDC can provide a means to bridge disparate currencies through XRP. Its inherent interoperability can allow for connection with other central bank ledgers for efficient cross-asset and cross-border transactions. This can be done with cross-issuance, using XRP as a bridge currency or via cross-ledger communication protocols. This reduces the risk that institutions are forced to accept when transacting across multiple networks or currencies in the current system. The creation of a CBDC provides powerful benefits for the economy and people of an adopting central bank. It's technology that places trust in digital money in the hands of a central bank that can guarantee accessibility to funds and the resulting services, as is the case with cash today. The result? An improved foundation for global financial development where businesses, commercial banks and ultimately people can unlock new economic potential. Work with Ripple to build a custom pilot designed for your country or institution today. So guys, now having watched that and being able to understand the reason why there are different private ledgers, remember, private ledgers are for central bank digital currencies. And by the way, something else, it's not just one private ledger. Of course, there are multiple private ledgers and each private ledger has different attributes to it. Why? Because the monetary policy of various countries is going to be different. And on top of that, the central bank digital currencies themselves are going to be programmed differently from different areas around the world due to their monetary policies. I mean, you take China, for instance, the Chinese central bank digital currency should be looking way, way different than the one that's going to be issued here by the Federal Reserve. Why? Due to their ties into the, you know, the social credit system and all that they want their central bank digital currency to do with over here they're talking about hey we want to preserve your anonymity and give you that that freedom to be able to utilize your currency without being spied on so i mean there is just so much out there to show that what this person is communicating is completely incorrect now with the public ledger xrp the benefit of the public ledger is this that XRP becomes that bridge asset between all these various digital currencies all around the world. And it is the rails to transport liquidity cross border. And think of it like this, guys. Remember, ISO 222 messaging standard. What are we dealing with there? We're dealing with the transfer of value from central bank currencies all around the world, cross border, and it's XRP that is going to be the grease for those rails. Now, let's end this video on a real positive note. Lately, guys, we have been seeing something quite remarkable in the markets, and that is this. Just take a look. So right now, Bitcoin and Ethereum are struggling in terms of movement, but while XRP whales are accumulating big time, just take a look at this one right here. Ripple price prediction, XRP is highly undervalued and whales are accumulating. And look, guys, this is right out of today, December 1st, 2022. We are seeing a lot of these big buyers come in and scoop up XRP. And we are going to be seeing, I think very, very soon, we're gonna get a resolution to our case. We're gonna see the utilization of XRP on a global scale. And we are going to watch price appreciation of this asset really take off. Now, will it hit $327,000? Mm, I don't think so. But guys, needless to say, it's going to be an amazing ride. Now listen, this is the video I have for you today and I invite you, look, if you have something that you think should be added, join the conversation and drop it down into the comments right there and open it up to the community and start a discussion. 
So guys, I just wanted to remind the community that recently we started a Discord and it has been growing extremely fast. And it is an amazing place where you can get out there and meet with like-minded individuals and discuss all your thoughts, ideas, opinions, and anything else with respect to this entire digital asset space. Now, I'm gonna be in there time to time and it would be great to meet you in there. Now, the link for that is right down there in the description of this video and it is absolutely free. Now, something else that has come up is I've been getting a lot of comments and questions and emails about where to buy XRP or what a safe exchange would be to use. And so I reached out to some folks that I have been working with and worked with in the past all the way back from December of 2020 and they are extremely reputable and they're not an exchange, they're a brokerage. And here they are right here, it is Caleb and Brown. And these are an amazing group of people to work with and the services that they provide are truly amazing. There's no joining fees, no ongoing account fees, no deposit fees and no withdrawal fees. Now, the thing that's great about dealing with a brokerage over an exchange is if you have an issue, you just pick up the phone and you talk to them because you're assigned an individual broker and they are available 24 seven to help you with whatever issues you have. Now you try that with Uphold or Coinbase or Kraken and you're gonna get a support ticket that's just gonna be bounced all around. Well, these guys, they'll help you out right quick. Now there's a link down there in the description. You use that link to, to join up and, and click on that. You're gonna get three and a half percent on your fees and that is it. All you've got is your trading fees, no other fees. So it's a great thing. Now, hey, with respect to the coaching I've been doing, I put it out there that I had 25 spots. Well, they got eaten up so fast that I only have about four spots left. And if that's something that interests you, then you just write me right there at coaching at the digitaloutlook.com and I'll get back to you right quick. Now, guys, as you know, I'm not a financial advisor and this isn't financial advice, but if you found value in it, if you'd hit that like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And hey, don't forget to hit that notification bell down there so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that we're uploading. And if you're one of the thousands of folks who have been watching these videos, but you haven't yet subscribed, would you do the channel a favor and join this community? We would really love to have you on board. So in the meantime, and in between time, stay safe, be blessed, and I'll catch you in the next one.